And at this time, Jonathan will come and read our text for the morning. You can follow along Luke chapter 2, 8 through 20. Luke chapter 2, starting at verse 8. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone around about them, and they were very much afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. Ye shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God, and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill towards men. And it came to pass, as the angels were gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds said one to another, Let us now go even unto Bethlehem, and see this thing which has come to pass, which the Lord has made known unto us. And they came with haste, and found Mary, and Joseph, and the babe lying in the manger. And when they had seen it, they made known abroad that saying which was told them concerning this child. And all they that heard it wondered at those things which were told them by the shepherds. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen as it was told unto them. Amen. As we light the shepherd's candle, hath lit it, and uh, we're talking about the shepherds today. What do we learn from the shepherds? Indeed, the good news shepherds, because they were the very first to bring the good news. Hmm. As we look at our text this morning, here were simple shepherds going about their everyday job or night job. And uh, things perhaps at times, I'm sure, like in every job, they get boring, don't they? It's humdrum, the same thing, the same routine, bah, and so on, using your staff, using your crook, chasing away wild animals, and so on. But tonight, this night was not boring at all, indeed. It was the most exciting time in their lives. And they heard the best news ever that they ever heard. Now, how they respond to this news really is helpful for us because they set examples in their attitudes and in their actions to this good news that every believer, every Christian should incorporate in their lives. Very simple thing, very simple key words that we can remember. But it's those things that make the Christian life successful, joyful, powerful. A life that will glorify God. So the good news affected their attitudes and their actions. And let's take a look at it. And the first word we're going to look at is they listened. They listened. They were good listeners. Look at verses 10 through 14. So here it is. An angel appeared suddenly before them. The glory of the Lord shone round about them. They were terribly frightened. I mean, who wouldn't be, right? In their right mind in that setting. But then they listened. The angel told them, don't be afraid, for behold, I bring you good news 
of great joy, which will be for all the people. Goes on to say, For today in the city of David, where David was born, Bethlehem, there has been born for you the greater son of David, Jesus, a Savior. Well, who is he? Who is Christ? He's the Messiah. The Messiah has been born. The Lord. Now that word Lord, translated from that Greek word, is most often used in the New Testament. Yes, it can mean sir or master, but it's most often used as a divine title. That this one born is God in the flesh. He is Yahweh. And he's been born for you in flesh. This will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths, lying in a manger, a feed trough where they feed animals. And suddenly there appeared with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts praising God. Now, if one angel wasn't enough to scare the life out of them, a whole bunch of angels come along and join them. And they were saying, glory to God in the highest on earth, peace among men with whom he is pleased, or men of goodwill. So it was pretty exciting, but they listened. You know, we can all remember, perhaps most of us can anyway, in grade school, when the teacher always kept after us and be asking, time without number, are you paying attention? Are you listening? Exactly. I'm sure you have that in homeschooling too, right? Uh, well, there are some things that are just too important not to listen to. And our two ears really better pay attention. And so it was with these shepherds. This news was so important. An angel appearing from God, calming their fears, giving them great news, saying that the Messiah had finally come. The Messiah was born. How good is that? They were given a sign. You're going to find this baby. It's going to be wrapped in swaddling clothes. It's going to be lying in a manger, right? And then a multitude of angels join them, as we said, saying, glory to God in the highest, and so on. They were giving glory to God. How exciting is that? Now, the shepherds, obviously, they, they took this all in. They were just, you know, taking it all in, their attention was riveted on these angels and the message and the lighting. I mean, talk about the glory of God shining. I mean, I've seen the northern lights a couple of times. They call it in Latin the aurora borealis. How many have seen that? Can you raise your hand? The northern lights? All right, look at how many are missing out. Wow, boy, I'll tell you, it is a sight. It is so beautiful. You don't know whether to stand still and watch it or run. It's gorgeous, and I've, I've seen that, and of course, we've all seen Fourth of July fireworks that light up the sky, but I think it paled in comparison to this, especially emanating from God and these angels all around. So their attention was riveted to what was going on. Their excitement was off the charts. I mean, it was incredible. You know... We all love good listeners, right? When you're speaking to someone, it's really hard to speak to someone when they're kind of looking up at the ceiling or looking out the window, and then they look at you, yeah, yeah, and they're looking someplace else. That really gets you, doesn't it? All right, we all love good listeners who will look at you and be listening to what you're saying. Most of all, God loves it when we pay attention to what he's saying. When we give him good attention, how important that is. You see, if we're not listening to God and his words, who or what are we listening to? We're listening to somebody. It's very important. See, the Christmas news that the shepherds had, they paid close attention to what God was saying. Here's the question, should we do otherwise? When we open the word of God, God is surely speaking to us. 
just as if an angel appeared to us. This is the living word of God. But might I say so often, we fail to give it good attention. So they listen. The second word is they believed. They believed in verse 15. And it was quite obvious. If you want to follow along in your pew Bibles, you'll have the exact wording. When the angel had gone away from them into heaven... The shepherds began saying to one another, Let us go straight or over to Bethlehem then and see this thing that has happened which the Lord has made known to us. You know, someone has said, God said it. I believe it. That settles it. And that's the way it should be as we have the word of God from cover to cover. God said it, I believe it, that settles it. Now they heard the message. They willingly received the message. They believe the message. How do I know they believe the message? Well, look in verse 15. They believed the source, they said, which the Lord has made known to us. They believe this message came from the Lord. The Lord had made it known to them via an angel, which the Lord had made known to us. And they also believed that this event had already happened. Look at verse 15. Let us see this thing that has happened. So they know it had happened, and they know it came from the Lord. They believed. When God says something to us in his word, do we believe it as a done deal? Hey, God says it in the Bible. I believe it. That settles it. Do we really believe this book that we hold in our hands? Are we really convinced of its truth? Indeed, they were convinced. You know, what would you think if one proclaimed to be a true believer and said, They believe the Lord has made himself known in his word called the Bible. But they never read it. They didn't obey it. What would you think? Do they really obey it? Excuse me, believe it? I would say probably not. It's not very convincing. We can say the words, but if the actions are not there... These shepherds really believed this word had come from God. And when you have your Bibles, do we believe this word has surely come from God? This is God's word to us. So they believed. The third word is they acted. They acted or they obeyed. They acted. How long does it take for you when you hear something that needs to be responded to or something that really needs to be done that's very important to the time you actually do it? You know, there are some Christians who are procrastinators. I can't say I've never been in that camp. Sometimes more than I'd like to admit. And I'm sure you can identify. Sometimes we're procrastinators. But when God tells us something in his word that's important for our lives, just like he gave this heavenly message to the shepherds, can we afford to procrastinate? To put it aside? What if the angel or angels announce this message to them about this baby born in Bethlehem? You'll find him, and they said to one another, you know, this is cool. I like it. We'll go. Don't worry about when we've got time, when we get around to it. You say, what? Well, it's kind of like that, isn't it? God announces his truth to us, speaks right to our heart, many times bullseye us, right? And uh, we say, yeah, okay, God, I I, I hear you. Um, Yeah, I'll make changes eventually when I get around to it. No. 
They acted upon it. It's clear that the shepherds did not procrastinate at all from what we read in verse 15 because it says in verse 15, when the angels had gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds began saying to one another, right after the angels left, right after they left, they started talking to one another, hey, let's go straight to Bethlehem and see this thing. We're not going to stop at the coffee shop. We're not going to do anything else. We're going to go straight to Bethlehem, see this thing. So in verse 16, we read, they came in a hurry and found their way. They acted. They acted upon the word of God. Do we act upon the word of God? How often have I heard God's word speak to me, but was slow to act upon it? And sometimes I didn't act upon it. I just ignored it. I didn't do it. If nothing else, oh, the blessing that I missed. Because I did not seek out what God had for me. I missed the blessing. These shepherds acted immediately upon the word of God, quickly and obediently, and they were incredibly blessed. Once they knew the will of God, they did it. Now, I know when we look at our own lives and we start comparing their obedience to ours, their quick response to ours, we might feel, boy, there's really something lacking in my life in terms of responding to God quickly and obediently. Could it be, perhaps, that's the reason why I don't have the peace and joy in my life that I could have because I put God on the back burners, not on the front burners. I say, when I get around to it, I say, yeah, yeah, I know it's true, Lord. Thank you very much, you know. Uh, I'll do it eventually. Could it be that's why we lack that peace and joy? Jesus said, if you know these things, blessed, happy are you if you what? Do them. You see, the happiness comes from doing them. Not just knowing them, but doing them. So when we think of the good news they experienced, they acted upon that good news. Now the fourth thing they did was they focused. They focused. Also in verse 15. Now, when a serious issue comes into your life, something very important gets your attention, right? Don't you tend to focus on it? You say, man, I just got this through the mail, you know? Or, you know, we tend to focus on things that are important to us, that are serious to us. And we know from what we read, as we said a moment ago, when the angels went into heaven, man, they started focusing right away. They said, let's go straight to Bethlehem then. This baby is born, this Messiah, this God child is born. Let's go straight to Bethlehem. They focused on carrying out the word of the Lord that came through the angels. I want to ask the question, how focused are you? How focused am I? in our Christian lives. Are we really focused? Scripture says, fixing our eyes on Jesus. Do we really do that? Well, Peter got focused for a while, remember? When he was stepped out of the boat and kept his eyes on Jesus, he actually walked on water for a while. That's cool. But as long as he was focused, guess what? He was able to stay afloat. As long as he fixed his eyes on Jesus, he was able to stay there. You know, the scripture says, let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. From Hebrews 12c to 2a, fixing our eyes on Jesus, focusing our eyes on Jesus. These shepherds were focused, man. If something came in view and said to them, hey, hey listen, guys, I know you saw something. You're all excited. You're going to do something. But look, come out of my house for a minute. I've got something I want to show you. Do you think they would? I don't think so. They would have said, another time, Charlie, 
I, I, we just saw something we got to take care of. Uh, I haven't got time to go to your house. Sorry. Sorry about that. And, and they would have went right there. Indeed, they hurried. Indeed. So when I think about a focused Christian life, I think of this. There is nothing so effective as a focused Christian life. We know exactly what God wants us to do. We focus on it, and we do it. Now, I want to ask you, what is your focus in life? The Apostle Paul said this, I make it my aim to be well-pleasing to him. He said, for me to live is Christ. That's focus. You know, some Christians, because they have are kind of backslidden, they've kind of lost Christ in their life. Oh, he's still there ultimately, but not in any meaningful way. Then you've got other Christians who say, well, Christ is part of my life. He's part of my life. But you see, the real focused Christian doesn't say any of those two. He says, she says, Christ is my life. Not just out there somewhere, not just part of my life, but is my life. You see the difference? That's a focused Christian. And I tell you, they were focused on finding the Messiah. Everything was there. Dear friends, maybe in this new year coming, you say, Lord, I haven't been focused on you. You're kind of on the peripheral of my life. I kind of include you when I have time. Instead of saying, Lord, you are my life. You are my life. I live for you. The next word is, they were urgent. Verse 16. They were urgent. They came in a hurry. Urgency. There was a sense of urgency to find this heavenly babe to deliver this heavenly message because they had a message to deliver. And they came in a hurry and found Jesus. There was this urgency to find the Savior. But you know what? When we have found Jesus finally, and they finally did find him. When we have found Jesus, there's another urgency. The first was to find him. But the second urgency is once you've found him, to tell family and friends and anyone who will listen about him. That's the urgency we should have. And you know, sometimes we lose that urgency, don't we? You know, we first met Christ. We were so excited to follow the Lord. We were telling everybody about him. And then we kind of slipped away. Where, oh yeah, thank the Lord I'm, I'm saved. You know, I, I belong to him. But we don't tell anyone about him anymore or very seldom, or rarely. You see, we've lost that urgency. If, if you knew a cure for cancer, wouldn't you be urgent to tell others about it? Man, I've got this cure for cancer. You've got to hear. I mean, you'd do everything you could to get it out there. When you think of how many have perished, even in our families, you'd get it out there. You'd, you'd, you'd just spread it all over the place. Well, dear friends, you know the cure for cancer. The cancer of the soul, which is sin. And it's Jesus Christ. He's the only one that can cure it. And you know that answer and others don't. Shouldn't there be an urgency there as well? Indeed, there should. But so often we've lost that urgency, haven't we? And the shepherds indeed had that urgency. Shouldn't we have it? Lord, give me that urgency 
of telling others about you again. I've kind of lost it. I've kind of grown used to you. Lord, I've kind of taken you for granted now. And I really don't have that burning desire to let others know that I used to have because they've got to know because if they die without you, they'll perish. We'll be seeing family and friends this Christmas and acquaintances. Perhaps most of them don't know about Jesus. Some of them will be very religious, go to church frequently, but it's just religion to them. They don't have a relationship at all with Christ, and you can tell it, because they live like everyone else lives throughout the week. No change. But you know, both for the non-religious and the religious, the answer is Christ. You'll have that opportunity. It's urgent. And the greatest Christmas gift you can share is that unspeakable, indescribable gift, Christ with them. Not religion. Rules, traditions, customs won't save you. Only Jesus Christ himself. And then the sixth word, they discovered. They discovered 12 in 16. They came in a hurry and found their way to Mary and Joseph and the babies he lie in a manger. Indeed. Verse 12 says, this will be a sign for you. You'll find a baby wrapped in swaddling cloths lying in a manger. So they discovered... You know, it's so interesting to discover new things. Or even to discover where you've lost something that you've been looking for for months, right? That's where I left it. Oh, I thought I looked here. Or something that was right in front of you. Maybe you've lost for three days. I can't count how many times I came by here. I looked at this. Why didn't I see it? But sometimes we discover things fresh and new that we've never discovered before. And how amazing is that? And just imagine, they made their way, they found their way to Jesus with the instruction of the angels, the word of God, and they found Jesus. Sure enough, there was a baby wrapped in swaddling cloths. There he was, lying in a manger. Don't see that every day. You usually see animals feeding from feed troughs. But here's a little baby in there, lying there. So they came and found their way, and they found Mary and Joseph, and the baby is a lie in a manger. They discovered what God had for them to discover because they obeyed his instructions. Think about it this way. God has given us instructions in his word. Could it be that God has things for you to discover all kinds of wonderful truths and insights and intimacies with Jesus that you would not have discovered, that you would have not found unless you followed the instructions given by the angels slash the Word of God. Right? You see, the Bible is a discovery book. Is a book of discovery. God's instruction and God's words, as we follow it, cause us to grow deeper in our relationship with Jesus. In Him are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. God says, call unto me and I will show you great and mighty things which you do not know. You see, it's a life of discovery. You want to be adventurous? You want to be a discoverer? You can be as a Christian, indeed, taking God at his word, believing his promises, stepping out in faith, get out of that boat, walk on water, fixing your eyes on Jesus. You see, they discovered what God had for them, finding this child the greatest find ever found anywhere, 
Because they obeyed the word of God. They obeyed the instructions of God given to them via an angel. Dear friends, God wants you to be a discoverer. He has so much for you to discover about himself. And how precious is that? Number seven, they proclaimed. They proclaimed. Look at verses 17 and 18. And when they had seen this, that is the baby in the manger, Mary Joseph, when they had seen this, they made known the statement which had been told them about this child. And all who heard it wondered at the things which were told them by the shepherds. You see, when you have something so wonderful that happens to you, it's almost impossible to be quiet about it, right? Something great happens to you, guess what? And there's no one around, you just want to ring someone up on the phone to tell them, right? And you just, you'll never guess what happened to me. What, 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 what happened? Be quiet, I'll tell you. And, and, you know, you share with them because you're so excited. Well, and that's the way it was. Because they saw this babe, they saw his mom and dad. It was just like the angel said, this is the one, this is the Messiah that they've been waiting for for centuries. This is the God child. God in flesh. They were so excited. So excited. Dear friends, if you have met Jesus, truly met him, and you have been born from above, born anew, become a new creation, you have something to proclaim. I've often said a testimony is a powerful thing. You know, just share what Christ has done for you. Share how he came into your life. Share how you know you're a child of God and on your way to heaven. You can do that in all in five minutes. We used to practice that. How you were before you were saved, how you got saved, and how you are since now you're saved. All in five minutes. You know, and I tell you, people pay attention. Because in verse 18, they said, All who heard it wondered at the things. They marveled at the things that were told them by the shepherds. It's great. We proclaim it. And finally... They rejoiced. They rejoiced. Look at verse 20. The shepherds went back. You know, they didn't say, oh, we saw this marvelous event. You know, this angel appeared to us out in the field, and a whole bunch of other angels came, and they told us where to go, and we went. We saw this baby. Yeah, it was true, and, uh, yeah, the baby really was there, and he's, uh, you know, he's, he's the Messiah and stuff like that. No. It says the shepherds were glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen. They almost jumped out of their bodies, their skins. You can see them. They're so excited. How good are we are rejoicing? You know, the Apostle Paul says, and from a prison cell at that, Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. And it makes it powerful because he's saying that while he's in jail. Wow. Uh, incredible. You see, they went back to the fields again. They went back to the sheep. But their going back was different than their coming. They returned transformed. They were radically changed. They would never be the same. And it's reasonable to believe there were shepherds, say, in their 20s, that, you know, Jesus, in his 30s, starting the ministry, they very well could have firsthand followed Jesus, the age maybe of 50 or a little over. So, wow, how exciting for all that they heard and seen. Dear friends, if we're honest, we know the Lord, you and I have heard and seen a lot. We've seen God working. Something to rejoice about. Something to proclaim. So as we look at the good news that was given to the shepherds, we have examples for us. The good news, they listened, they believed, they acted, they were urgent, they discovered, they rejoiced, and they proclaimed. 
Brothers and sisters, brethren, let's do the same. Let's pray. Father, thank you so much for your word. And thank you for the example of the shepherds that really speak to us this morning. And Father, may we listen, be good listeners, and truly believe your word and act upon it. And Lord, may there be an urgency about it. And may we enjoy discovering you more and more. And Lord, may others see us rejoice as we proclaim the good news of Jesus and what he's done for us. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.